Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here, and welcome to my new weekend project. As you can see, we're going to be playing a game that's uh, kind of familiar on my channel. And since it is kind of around the same time as my anniversary, I figured it would be a great time to release this project. We are going to be playing a little game called The Simpsons Hit and Run. Now, this game has a lot of significance on my YouTube channel. Um, not only is it a game that I really, really enjoy because of my attachment to the uh, TV show Simpsons, uh, this game is very monumental to the uh, kind of success of my YouTube channel. And because of that, I figured it was time to kind of take a trip back to it. I tried to do a trip back to it last year during my 10th year anniversary stream. Overall it was okay, but I wasn't super thrilled about it, so I figured, uh, you know, maybe one year later I'd come back to the game again and actually do a uh, full length project on it. Which I know it might seem weird because I've already done this game before, I've actually done it twice before now. Um, the very first project I did in 2007 back around the time that the Simpsons movie came out. But that was done with very poor uh, video cam or webcam quality, and because of that I did not want to keep that as my permanent rendition of this project, so I came back to it a few years later with better quality, and that's kind of when my uh, YouTube channel really started kind of taking off. I got a lot of subscribers, I uh, got my... I think I had more than a thousand subscribers, but I hit like the 2,000, 3,000, and 4,000 subscriber milestones during the course of this project. So because of that, um, you know, that's kind of when I realized, you know, this YouTube thing I'm doing could actually take me places, and uh, that's pretty much uh, why this game is so important to me. I mean, that's not the only reason why. Um, overall, I think this is just a really, really, really awesome and well-done licensed video game. Because, you know, you have a lot of those video games that people make under the impression, well, it's uh, based off a TV show or a movie, it'll sell well. And that's generally the case, but they actually put some form of quality to this game. Uh, quality in terms of just the uh, game's normal humor, um, just the good quality of the video game itself. They brought all the voice actors in to reprise their roles as all the Simpsons classic characters. It's just a really, really well-made video game, and it's very faithful to, I guess, just Simpsons lore in general, and that's what I really, really like about it. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be uh, basically playing um, through this game again. I'm going to be trying some new things uh, as I'm going through this project, stuff I may have not really done in the past projects. Uh, in fact, I'm going to actually try to get 100%, um, because there are some things in this game that you have to kind of grind coins for. I've never done that because it's just time consuming and it's just for like a few extra cars here and there. Uh, but for this playthrough I would like to try to get all the uh, extra vehicles, all the extra costumes, and just kind of uh, showcase some of those old things that uh, I never really got around to showing off in uh, the previous projects of this game. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get things started here. Gonna go ahead and start a new game. Restarting will cause all unsaved game progress to be lost. That is okay with me. I have no problem with that. Hey, hey! I'm endorsing a new cola, kids! And this one isn't poisonous to anybody! That we know of. No one approved Buzz Cola is made from only the finest sugars and waters. Plus, it has a special ingredient, too hot, for the FDA. It'll give you the get up and go. You need to do all the pathetic stuff you have to do. Try new improved Buzz Cola. Mmm. Cola. Must get Buzz Cola. So immediately when we start, we're going to be uh, offered a tutorial. Um, as usual, I'm going to be skipping that tutorial because it's not really necessary. And uh, we'll definitely... Uh, figure out all of the game controls and things of that nature as we're going through this, so let's go ahead and skip that. 
Uh, but yeah, this is the world of The Simpsons Hit and Run. It's um, kind of a sandbox-style game, much like uh, the Grand Theft Auto series. In fact, that's one of the things why this game really kind of attracted, to, uh, or really kind of intrigued me about this game, was because it was kind of a cross between, uh, you know, Grand Theft Auto and The Simpsons. And, um, you know, I was really a huge fan of uh, Vice City at around the time of this game coming out. And uh, because of that, it was really easy for me to uh, kind of get on board with this game and just really have fun with this game, which was really cool. Uh, but yeah, um, so you have basically two forms of movement. You can walk around kind of this world. Um, you can jump. Uh, you can attack things uh, by pressing the B button. Um, and you can also interact with different objects and stuff, like we can knock this swing set down, um, we can go over here, we can turn on this barbecue, and we can uh, turn on this uh, statue. And we can also collect some things too, we've collected some coins. Um, but we can also collect these level cards, there are seven of these in every level. And you generally have to complete like some kind of like small platforming challenge or something, or just kind of wander around until you find them. That's basically how that, uh, that those kind of work. Then if we go over here, we'll find a couple of boxes, and we'll also find a wasp camera. Wasp cameras have been uh, basically kind of uh, inhabiting the world of Springfield at, at this current uh, date and time. They are kind of relevant to the main plot, as we'll find out later. Uh, there are 20 of them within a level, and if you destroy them, you get coins, so definitely uh, destroy them. And over here, we have the Flanders Bomb Shelter. We only come out to go to church. <laughs> um, and we also have some boxes. You can get some more coins from these boxes, but one thing I'm going to be doing a little bit differently in this playthrough compared to other playthroughs, I'm not actually going to be destroying these boxes. Uh, basically, if you hit a box twice, you'll get some coins to pop out. But if you hit the box a third time, uh, the box will actually break and disappear. And because of that, if they disappear, you're not going to have basically anything you can grind coins with. Now, I think if you basically hit these boxes enough time and not destroy them, then leave for another level and come back, uh, the boxes actually get refilled with coins. And because of that, you can use that as a way to kind of grind coins a lot easier. You don't get as many coins at first, but over time, it'll be great because then you can just kind of like reset your data, go to uh, a place like that, and just kind of farm some more. Or not really reset data, but you know, basically uh, leave the level, come back, and then just, you know, just keep grinding coins at those same spots, which is kind of a cool thing I never really thought of doing before. So that's what I'm going to be trying to do as I'm going through this playthrough. Gonna destroy another wasp camera, gonna kick some more boxes, but not destroy them. And, uh, yeah, gonna be kind of moving on from here. Uh, so in the past, uh, playthroughs I've done in this game, I've essentially, like, I guess I'll go ahead and show this off, because it does kind of lead into what I'm talking about here. You have the level progress option, which basically measures how much you've done in a level. As you can see right now, we've found one collector card, we've destroyed two cameras, and we activated uh, four level gags. <clears throat> In the past, I've basically done everything but get all of the uh, collector cards and all of the... Or not collector cards, all of the character clothing and the vehicles, because you basically need a lot of coins to purchase all of those. Uh, so in this playthrough, I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently. Um, I'm going to be going through the levels normally first and beating all of the levels. And once I beat the levels, then I'll kind of go back and do some cleanup after the fact. That way I can kind of cut out all of the, like, kind of in-between stuff as we're kind of going from place to place. Right now I'm just kind of going through this uh, initial area just to kind of collect some stuff. Uh, because I will need coins to buy some things as I'm going through a level. So that's why I kind of want to get these now, just so I'm kind of covered for the time being. And then I can kind of come back later and get more things uh, later on. So that's kind of my plan of attack so to speak as we're going through this and you know if, 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 if I'm ever in an area and you know there's something very quick I can do and something quick I can kind of complete or finish up maybe I'll do it then but um you know generally if you want to get everything you kind of have to drive around the whole map to essentially just find everything which can be kind of time consuming if uh you don't really handle it in the right way I have watched a couple of speedruns of um, The Simpsons Hit and Run 
I'm a 100% and also any percent, and it's actually pretty interesting to watch. Um, I know they actually had a playthrough of this game at uh, Games Done Quick, uh, Summer Games Done Quick, uh, a few weeks ago, so that was kind of cool to uh, watch that. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool speed game. I'm not sure if it's a game I'm going to end up speedrunning myself, because for one, and I mean, I do have the PC version, but... Uh, I don't know. I have a problem. I, I have a feeling that like my um, PC is not really that strong to handle um, basically playing just a CD game and of good quality enough to you know play it optimally with like speedrun qualities and whatnot. There's a logical explanation there. I don't know if I'm explaining it in the right fashion, but um, that's essentially why I am still playing the GameCube version as opposed to uh, the PC version, which I do have. Uh, so let's go ahead and kind of get things moving here. Let's talk to Marge and work on this tutorial mission. Homie, somebody ate every dessert in the house. I need you to run to the store and pick up some of that ice cream with the miniature pies in it. Oh, it must have been one of our kids. Probably Millhouse. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Millhouse did that, Homer. So here we have the cola caper. A very easy uh, tutorial mission. Just got to drive to the Super Quickie Mart and grab some things and... Uh, you don't even have to worry about like cars or racing cars or avoiding cars or any of the other things that you will end up doing in like future missions or future levels of the game. But yeah, pretty standard mission, just kind of getting you used to the type of gameplay you'll be experimenting with or playing throughout this. Anyway, made it to Quickie Mark once again, uh, much like with the boxes for the vending machines. Gonna kick them twice, but not gonna actually destroy them. And let's go inside and actually uh, finish up this first mission. Hey, Apu, give me a cola and I need another bucket of ice cream with mini pies. What happened to the ice cream with mini pies your wife bought this morning? Well, I probably ate it. I don't remember stuff too good. Yeah, Homer, I think that was you. <laughs> I think that was you. Um, so yeah, we have a couple of other things we can do here. A few more level gags we can uh, kind of interact with here. Am I activating the alarm? Yeah, I did. Okay, good. Can also activate the swish, squishy machine, the lottery ATM machine. Or just an ATM machine. I thought that was like a lottery ticket machine or something. And we also got to play a little game of uh, Larry the Looter. Well, that was short-lived. But that is a level gag. So I kind of, again, I showed this off a little bit earlier. So level progress. Uh, story missions are basically the missions that progress the game. And once you complete all seven, you basically access the next level. Uh, there's also one bonus mission that you can do throughout the level. Uh, there are three street races. There are seven collector cards. There are three collector clothings, which uh, just to show that off really quick, you can actually buy the clothings over here or any places like this that have kind of like characters you can interact with and things you can interact with. Uh, but yeah, if you go over here, you can buy some character clothings for a certain number of coins. And just for fun, let's go ahead and buy Homer's casual outfit just to kind of showcase. But yeah, basically, <laughs> you just kind of wear what uh, clothing you purchase <laughs> if you uh, buy those. Uh, but also, in addition to that, um, you also have um, vehicles. Uh, there are five vehicles you can get throughout the course of a mission. You get one from the bonus mission. Uh, you get one for completing all the street races. Uh, there's one that you can buy from a random Springfield character. Uh, usually you'll actually need that to complete a story mission, so you'll get that regardless. And there's actually two you can buy from Gil, which much like in the same format as the character clothing, so you have to find them and then buy those cars there. And then after that, you have the wasp cameras. Again, there's 20 of those, and there's also gags, which are just basic little things that you can interact with where, you know, some th different things will happen, like the squishy machine, the, like, silent alarm, the ATM machine, just stuff of that nature. You'll usually get a coin for also interacting with them, but, um, yeah, usually there's, like, a certain number of gags throughout a level. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what we're going to be doing. We're going to be trying to get in, get all of those things. And uh, I'll try to show off a couple of other things here and there. So 
So once again, gonna hit the box, but not destroy it. So this will kind of be a new experience for me because, um, yeah, I'm not entirely used to, because uh, I've never actually 100% of this game before, believe it or not. Uh, just because, again, the coin grinding has always been really rough for me, but now that I have kind of a strategy to use, I think it'll actually be kind of fun trying to uh, grind everything and trying to get everything. And it should be more manageable now that I kind of have like some strategies I can use. But we'll see how it goes. Again, it's going to be a major, like, play-by-ear sort of thing. But it's 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 cool, because I love this game. It's a game I enjoy playing. It's a game that uh, I'm excited to play again for YouTube. This is the third time I've played this game for YouTube. I think uh, the only other game I've played, like, this many times for YouTube, and technically, like, you can't really even say it 100%, but... Uh, I have played Kirby Superstar essentially three times because I played the original twice and then I played Superstar Ultra at some point too. So, um, yeah, I've played that game a lot. I've played this game a lot. But, you know, they're both games that I enjoy. I'm honestly surprised I haven't played Super Mario World yet. Um, but I've done several stream playthroughs of it too. So that's not really saying a lot. Uh, so, yeah, we kind of got everything we need from the uh, tutorial area. So we're going to drive back to the Simpson household and get started on the first official story mission because the tutorial mission did not count as a story mission because it just kind of wanted to introduce you to the controls and whatnot which is understandable also when you're driving around much like the uh, star system of Grand Theft Auto if you hit objects or people your meter on the uh, little radar on the bottom right will actually increase you can see that kind of yellow line. Uh, basically, if you um, raise that meter all the way to the blue section of the meter, um, you'll actually be in a stage called Hit and Run, where the police will actually be chasing you down. And if they stop you, um, you'll actually lose 50 coins. So you want to avoid that at all cost. So basically, be careful. Don't do crime. And then you won't do the time. Lisa left for school without her science project. Can you get it to her? Oh, do I have to? You can drop it off on the way to work. And I have to go to work? Okay, so here's our first mission, SMRT. Race Principal Skinner to the school and give Lisa her science project. Let's do this thing. Okay, that's something I'll do. Uh, so you can also, basically, you have a bunch of cars you actually own. And you can actually call for your cars if you go to one of these telephone booths, or what used to be a telephone booth. And you can actually just kind of call that and car and bring them forward. Back, and you'll also unlock a bunch of other cars that you can also call, uh, call once you buy them. Or, if you don't want to do that, you can also just randomly take a um, car from the uh, public. And you can use that instead. Let's go ahead and do that just for fun. I'm going to try to experiment a little bit with uh, some of these cars, just to kind of have a little more fun with this playthrough. Uh, these cars, though, the cars you generally get in public are not that great. They can actually be destroyed very easily, and uh, they're not really that good stats-wise. But, um, you know, if you don't want to call your car for some reason, I guess you could bring this if you really, really want to. Uh, but yeah, then this first mission, all you gotta do is race uh, Skinner to the school. It's not too hard. Skinner's uh, very slow. And there's a couple of minor shortcuts you can do to kind of save some time. And there we go. Task complete. So, good job, Homer. You are a madman behind the wheel, I will tell you that. So we made it to the school. Let's go ahead very quickly activate this level gag right here. And there's also another level gag right here, but I think you have to talk to Lisa first before you can activate it. Oh, no. Okay, I got it. Never mind. You can also interact with, uh, I believe, Skinner right here. Shouldn't you be in class? Which is funny because we raced him here, so it's like, how do you get in so fast? <laughs> Okay, well, let's give Lisa her science project. Thanks for bringing me my model of the digestive system. Hey, where's the gallbladder? I got hungry, and it was a fig. It was modeling clay. Oh. By the way, Dad, Mom called, 
She says she needs to talk to you at home before you go to work. Ow! You ever have that nightmare about whenever you were a kid at school? You just had a nightmare of your uh, father coming to school with, like, just his underwear on and nothing else? That's kind of must. That might, that must be what Lisa's going through right now. <laughs> uh, so before we uh, actually uh, leave this area, I'm gonna go ahead and go back and get all of the uh, not really level gags. I think all the level gags are inside the school, but all of the um, kind of wasp cameras and stuff that are in the uh, school's backyard because there are a couple of things. Um, I think there's like a wasp camera over here. If you've played this game as much as I have, you just kind of know where a lot of these things are. And if you're, this is like kind of your first time playing this and trying to collect everything, it does take a while to kind of learn all of these different uh, locations and stuff. But once you kind of get a feel for it, you'll find that, because you'll be kind of repeating a lot of these levels. Uh, there are some levels you'll play multiple times with a different character in a different like setting, like in nighttime or something. So if you go back and revisit a lot of the same areas, you'll generally find, like, wasp cameras in the same places. And, you know, you can get kind of an idea of where you might be able to find some other objects, too. So I wouldn't say it's really too hard to 100% everything. But, um, you know, there's always going to be, like, that one location whenever you're kind of doing this for the first time where you'll just end up missing up? something. Good also, hey, Willie, what's up? I got no time for your nonsense. Whee! Hope, you're doing good, hope you're doing a good job groundskeeping. Because that is what you do. Okay, I'm going to go ahead once again. Hit the boxes, but not break them. I'm really curious to see if this strategy is going to work. Because, I mean, we'll still be collecting a lot of coins throughout the playthrough. But then, when I come back to old levels, I can just kind of get more coins that way. And that may, like, kind of give me the difference of... Uh, what I need to essentially unlock everything. We'll just have to wait and see. Unfortunately, you can't really do that with the wasp cameras. Once you, uh, once you destroy them, they will never come back to life, which is kind of a shame. Uh, so there we go. Got everything here. And over here, we actually have one of the street races. However, this is not one of the three street races that uh, it actually keeps track of. Uh, this is a special street race where you can actually gamble coins to get a bigger payout. Which can be kind of helpful, I guess, but uh, I wouldn't really depend on it, honestly. Because you do essentially, a lot of those gamble races, or the wager races as they're actually called, um, they actually take you through the entire world map. So you'll be spending a lot of time racing through everything. And over here we have an actual street race. You can kind of tell like what's a street race based on the radar. If you see a white and black flag, that's usually a street race. And they're also run by Ralph Nelson and Milhouse. You can kind of use that to find out where they are. I'll uh, take care of that a bit later. Again, I'm going to try to focus mainly on the story missions first. Get those done and then I'll come back and do all the secrets and stuff of that nature. I think that sounds like a good idea. Uh, so I'll do one more mission and then I'll end this first video. That's another great thing is I'll actually have more video time to work with for this project because when I did the project initially I only had the 11 minute YouTube time limit to work with so it's going to be a lot nicer to play through this. It'll also take a lot less videos too. So let's go ahead and talk to Marge. Wait, I'm going the wrong way. I, for some reason, I thought I was the blue arrow on the radar, so I thought I was already facing the right way. Oh, and Marge is actually inside, too, so that's also different. Okay, and also, I believe this is another level gag. Yep, the TV. Okay, well, let's go ahead and talk to Marge, then. Homer, go talk to Ned Flanders. He seems miffed. NPO. Why me? I'm the world's greatest neighbor. I even have a mug to that effect. Okay, so it looks like we're going to be talking to our good friend Ned Flanders. Well, <laughs> good friend is kind of pushing a little bit, I think, but uh, you know what I'm saying. I'm all in a dither, Homer. So many of my possessions have disappeared. I called the police to find the culprit. Culprit, eh? My lawnmower, my cooler, my lawn chair, a family portrait, 
Even Rod's inhaler. What kind of sick individual would take this stuff? Oh, no. I borrowed all of Flanders' stuff. Quick, think of an excuse to get out of here. Uh, excuse me. I think I have to go shuck some corn. Okay, so mission number two, Petty Theft Homer. Collect all six of Ned's lost items before time runs out. Piece of cake. So once again, let's go ahead and... I kind of want to grab that school bus just for fun. <laughs> just again, just going to be using some different uh, vehicles. Why not? I mean, the game allows us to, so... Let's go ahead and give it a shot, I guess. We Wow, this thing does not turn very well. <laughs> I can already tell that. But yeah, like again, it, it's really nice that they kind of sprinkle like little Simpsons references and bits of humor throughout the game. Again, they kind of uh, reference Homer's uh, quirk of borrowing things from Ned's Flanders and never giving them back, which is kind of cool. Kind of, kind of cool and kind of nice how they do that. Uh, so before I talk to Barney, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some coins here. We have time, so why not? I think that timer like changes for each item, so you definitely have time to kind of go around and do Just some me. of this stuff from what I remember. I think there's also, yep, there's some boxes over here too. Must never run. I'm obviously not going to showcase every single instance of, you know, where you can find boxes and stuff, but, you know, I'll cover all of the... Easy and general spots to find. Okay, so let's talk to Barney. Wow, I need a disco nap. Uh, you remember that cooler I gave you for your birthday? Well, Flanders wants it back. Now what will I use for a toilet? I don't know, Barney. You could use a regular toilet. That sounds like a much better idea, honestly. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and keep on going. Watch it, I almost built my Sunday. Almost done. Now I need Flanders' stupid picture of a stupid family. Why the hell would Homer want oh, Flanders' family oh, portrait? I have uh, no idea. Although it's not as uh, questionable as this next item we'll have to get. Okay, last one. Where did I leave Rod's stupid inhaler? On top of the dump truck. Okay, two questions. Why does he have Rod's inhaler? And two, why did he leave it on top of a dump truck? <laughs> oh, Homer, you make no sense sometimes. No sense whatsoever. But that's why that's why people love you though. What they don't love is they don't love the whole uh, jerk-ass Homer, which is kind of a terminology they use to kind of describe modern Simpsons, where uh, basically kind of the turn of the show is when Homer kind of become more of a, like, jackass of sorts and not really just kind of a lovable idiot, so to speak. Okay, there we go. Let's talk to Flanders and end this mission. Flanders, look, I found your missing stuff. Now, about the reward. <laughs> Thanks, neighbor Rooney. Here's your reward. A prayer from the Lord's number one fan. Our Father in Heaven, bless this noble oath. Stupid Flanders getting happiness from religion. Everybody hey, there's nothing wrong with getting happiness from a rel religion. Just like I get happiness from this game. Uh, but I think I am going to go ahead and stop this video here. Thank you to everyone for watching. I will see you guys next time when we continue up the rest of World 1 or Level 1 and potentially even finish it. So, yeah. I'll uh, see you guys then. Later, folks.